From January 18th to February 21st, San Pellegrino traveled to 10 cities across the U.S. and Canada in search of the best student chefs North America has to offer. What we found is a diverse collection of culinarians, each with their own unique history and perspective, but all with a common goal, to win the title of 2012 San Pellegrino Almost Famous Chef. I feel like San Pellegrino really has opened doors. I have these amazing chefs who are just so willing to come in on their days off and just, you know, learn from them. And that is an amazing opportunity. I mean, it's just really given like this all-encompassing type of mentorship, especially like Jean-Carl Lachman, him himself being a competitor. The type of advice that he gave me was just absolutely great. The list of chefs that are going to be there to judge, it's like like the cook's equivalent of like a dream team boy band. It's a culinary student's dream to feed chefs like that. Uh, after regionals, I was uh, kind of in shock. Uh, I was facing a lot of hard competition and they did a really good job too. You learn a lot about yourself from just being under that pressure because the pressure you can't really simulate in practice. After the regionals were over, we got a chance to talk with Chef Kent Rasburn of uh, Dallas, Texas. It was really cool to have just a moment to talk with him just about food and to get his perspective on food from someone who really knows a lot. Those are kind of moments you don't have very often, so to have a, a good food conversation with, uh, with a great chef was just an awesome experience. Chef Jason Dady from, uh, from San Antonio, he, he was our chef mentor. He did, he did a really great job of just having like, you know, an intimate conversation with you about stuff you can't learn unless you talk to somebody who's been in the restaurant business. As far as mentorship, that's like one of my uh, favorite things about it, that you get to meet so many different chefs and uh, people in the industry that kind of help you along the way and help you kind of almost give you a better sense of what goes on in the industry. I think the biggest thing I learned was um, time management. We got two hours to do eight plates, but that time went by so fast. As far as this competition goes, I really don't feel that there's any losers at all. I mean, just the people you meet, the chefs you meet, the, the different recipes that people put out. So all in all, everyone's a winner. There's a lot of stuff that I learned from the regional competition, like how to, how to stand in front of 75 people and not be nervous. Nerves happen like the first five minutes of entering the kitchen because I'm really anxious to go and start. But after that, like you get in your bubble, you get in your zone, and I just run through like the whole, like the steps of what I have to do. And uh, as soon as that happens, there's no, there's no nerves. I'm really excited to meet uh, Gary Danko and uh, Eric Pear, all the judges. I'm, I'm excited to see Sister Lee. My chef was the most supportive before he had to start his judging and whatnot. He came, he gave me a hug, gave me two kisses, and he said in French, so, which means like, you go and you like you kick butt, you know, like you go and you get this. I, I think it's going to be a good outcome whether I win or not. Just because I don't win doesn't mean I can't uh, go and chase Gary Deco for a stats, right? You know, one of the biggest things in competition is that you just have to kind of go with the flow. You just kind of have to make do with what you got. And uh, the regional competition just kind of like exemplified that. It was just really a good day for me. And then also I was thinking about how much work I have to put in to get ready for, uh, for Napa. All you can do at the end of the day is give the, give the judges cheeseburgers. You have to do your best to give them and show them stuff that they want to see. And they can either take that and accept that or not. It's such an amazing experience, given that, giving that to me, it was my first ever cooking competition. I'm, I'm always thinking about the, the, all the judges, like when I'm done cooking, I just go in front of the judges, I'm totally sweating, man. I am a very shy person, and I am not sure that I could present myself in front of many viewers. Well, that's my biggest fear, like the media judges, it's too hard for me because English is my second language. So it's kind of hard. I learned that giving my best effort on what I love to do, yeah, you know, just go with the flow. <laughs> I'm going to present what I am. Whatever I feel, I'm going to tell to them. 
I was happy that all the hard work that I've done to prepare myself for this competition really paid off. You know, sometimes I lose confidence in myself in situations where uh, curveballs are thrown at me, but with all the curveballs that were thrown at me during regionals, I learned that I could you know, work with it and still come out on top. One quote that my chef likes to tell says, uh, the window of opportunity is very small, so take advantage of it. Throughout the whole competition, I just kept thinking of, of that little window that I have. It's my senior year at Johnson & Wales, and I want to really, really do some really amazing things at the end of the year. Regardless of the outcome, I'm still going to be really, really excited and happy. I was chosen as an alternate, and I had the opportunity to become a competitor last week so this was a very short notice thing for me and I've only had three days to practice and so my nerves are really getting to me even though it's just a get my feet wet type of thing. <laughs> I think I would be in shock if, if I won this because of the fact that there's only three days. I mean it's not that I'm not confident about my dish or anything like that I feel like I've, I could prepare as much as I could but I think my initial reaction would just be shock. This is giving me an opportunity to prove myself in the culinary world as opposed to the baking world and it would it would affirm that I could actually do this. Just having the opportunity to compete and actually be in the competition is accomplishment enough. It, it would just be amazing just to place. I grew up in the bakery. I probably should have always been a chef, but when I graduated high school, I went into college to be an accountant. And then two years ago, um, I had brain cancer. And so, I had to stop working and get surgery, go through cancer treatments. I decided that I wanted to do something that I was most passionate about when I was finished recovering and that's what made me change my mind to go to culinary school and become the chef that I probably should have always been. Probably kiss my wife. She's the one who's who calms me down when I'm anxious, who, you know, energizes me when I'm down so I definitely want to give her a big hug and kiss tonight if I win this thing. The experience itself just being a part of it was tremendous. It's done a lot for me already. I learned that I am my own biggest enemy. I build myself up to like oh, man I'm, I'm not gonna do this. I can't do this. And then once I get going I find my groove and I I figure out what I'm supposed to be doing and, it's, and it just all comes naturally and if I went to Napa Valley and I wasn't the winner, would the competition still be worthwhile? Absolutely because listening to the chef mentors, meeting the people that can help guide your career, I couldn't imagine my experience being any better than what it was. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment we've all been waiting for. Your winner of the 2012 San Pellegrino Almost Famous Chef competition is...